Hi, my name is Eugene Litvak, founder of the Litvak team at Compass. I've been selling property for over 10 years, and what should come as no surprise is that the sales process can be very complex. It can be confusing, it can be stressful. I mean, after all, every seller is trying to get the absolute most out of what is likely their most expensive asset. So I'm very excited today to share some tips on how to optimize the selling process. I'm actually going to the Upper East Side of our network. We're gonna take a look at our property and also meet with one of the top producing agents on my team. Come along for the ride. Hey Jeff. Hey Eugene. How's it going? How's everything? It's great. How about yourself? Not too bad. Excellent. So I'm really excited about this listing you're about to show me. Um, prior to us going up, when you're first sitting with a seller, what are some of the things that you're discussing? So one of the things that I go over which is really important is our game plan, our strategy, what makes us different. Kind of lay out the whole plan from A to Z, what to expect, and so they know the entire process before we even actually begin. Right, I bet the sellers love that you have your own plan, that you lay out everything from the beginning, there's no guessing games, they kind of see the clear path and the end goal right up front. Yeah, it's always nice to have a map wherever you're going. There you go, yep. there you go, okay cool. So anything else, I mean, what else are you guys discussing in this first meet? Uh, so a very interesting point is that uh, I have to understand why they're selling. I mean, some people, they just want top dollar, they want to take their money mm -hmm. out. Other people need to sell and close in 30 days because they're buying something else. Mm -hmm. So I kind of have to understand their reasoning so that I can give the best strategy for what they are doing. Right, so I bet they love that as well because now it's not just about here's this one thing, it's about what are you looking to do here, the multiple options, what's the best way for you to do it. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing, nice. yeah. amazing. Well, I would sell my home with you, Jeff. I would hope so. <laughs> so any final tips? Any tips for a home seller out there that's about to get started on this journey? Any tips for a home seller of, of when they're getting started? Yeah, so one thing is that you want to have your, what I call your three pillars. You want to have your team with you. You obviously want your real estate professional. <laughs> you want to have a mortgage broker and you want to have a real estate attorney that specializes in the area that you're mm -hmm. transacting in. Mortgage broker, a lot of people say, hey, I'm a seller, why do I need this? You want to make sure that whoever's purchasing the apartment is qualified. Mm -hmm. And that is why your mortgage broker, mortgage broker comes in, because a pre-approval letter that they have can come from anywhere. Right, makes perfect sense. All right, cool, well, let's go check out the place. Great, check it out. Beautiful, so Joe, tell me about this gorgeous listing. All right, well, this is a full service building on the Upper East Side. This apartment is massive, as you can see. It's three bedrooms, three true bedrooms, mm -hmm. two bathrooms, fully renovated, Beautiful. and it has a whole private balcony. It's so great, I mean, you just don't see space like this anymore. You don't, you usually have to decide if you want space or renovations, so you kind of get both here. Beautiful. Um, and if you think this is impressive, you have to come with me to the master. Now, nah, let's check it out. So one of the things that I really love about this place is this huge foyer here. I live in a house, and this makes it feel like a house as well. Mm. It makes it feel like a real home other than a typical apartment. Right, makes sense, makes total sense. <laughs> What do you think? Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's uh, this apartment, it has a king bed in here now. This place can fit two king beds. It has two sets of closets. This set isn't standard to the floor plan. This was done afterwards. Mm. I, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. When I said huge, I meant huge. Yeah, the space here is literally unbelievable. I mean, this is the size of most like New York City studio apartments. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is that this being the master, the other two bedrooms in here would be considered masters and any other kind of apartment. That's how big they are too. That's incredible. This apartment's really, truly spacious. I mean, it's really a fantastic space. Yep. So Jeff, what a home. It's completely renovated. I mean, someone can literally move right in. It seems great. Is there anything even more special that you're not telling us about? <laughs> Actually, there is. <laughs> oh, but wait, there's more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, if you want the cherry on top, there is an apartment next door mm. for sale as well, which could be purchased separately or together with this one. And then you can turn this three bedroom into a five bedroom home, wow. which they've actually done the same combination on a higher floor as right. well. So if you feel you needed over 2,000 square feet, wow. you have that option as well. Wow, so basically someone could just have this whole space. You talk about it being a home, it's like you have your own guest house. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. What a beautiful piece of real estate. I mean, I love the real estate I get to see. But for me, honestly, it's always been about helping my clients. Why the look back team? Because he makes me do things like this. In all seriousness, we have basically grown up together. Um, initially, when we moved to the city, my husband and I were looking for a rental. 
he helped us find our rental and then we ended up buying. He helped us find our apartment, which was really difficult to find. He was super supportive throughout the process. Basically, at, the, at this point in our lives, um, we had decided to make the big leap out of the city. And it was very exciting, but very stressful at the same time because there were a lot of things that we had to think about. We had to think about, you know, our kids' school. We have two apartments to sell. How do we even kind of go about doing that? Um, who do we use to help us find an apartment, a, a house, see an apartment? I'm thinking about New York City, but we're moving to the suburbs. Um, who do we use out there? And you know, Eugene was the first person that we thought of. We called him, he came over very quickly, sat down, made us feel a lot more at ease, um, told us kind of what to expect, the game plan, helped us find a realtor out of the city who we used, um, and it's just been seamless. I mean, it's really anxiety provoking to kind of approach something that you don't know anything about. and. For me, I think the entire real estate experience was really great and you know, the marketing and the strategy and the planning and kind of talking it all through, um, I really thought was brilliant. And you know, in addition to that, the staging and the virtual staging and seeing the before and after photos was really cool because I'd never actually seen that done before because we'd never sold anything before. So. Um, it was, it was really neat and a really positive experience. Um, but I think, you know, for me, I think the most important thing was the support throughout the whole thing. Um, just being available, you know, sending an email, you know, at like 10 o'clock at night and actually getting a response um, and making time to have a conference call to talk through something. Um, and really not having kind of any obstacle in the way of that happening was really huge because it is a nerve wracking yet exciting experience. It's really important to have somebody, you know, there and a team there that is supportive through the process. And I think that's something that's lacking a lot nowadays. And basically I think, you know, Eugene was there every step of the way and his team was there every step of the way. And basically been there every step of the way for the last 10 years. So we're here to visit Jason Zegans of Zegans Law Group. We've been working together for over 10 years and he's just an exceptional attorney. Ultimately, I'm really excited to see what tips he'll have to share about how to optimize the selling process. Let's go on up. So Jason, we're talking today about the sales process, how it can be complicated, it can be confusing, and tips for sellers so that when it's time for them to sell, the process can be optimized and a little bit simpler. Sure. We just finished meeting with Jeff Pantone. Uh, he showed us a beautiful listing on the Upper East Side. Mm -hmm. And he spoke of the value of putting a team together, proper real estate attorney, mortgage broker, and a real estate broker. So I'd love to hear from you. What are some of the tips you have as to why it's so important for the real estate attorney to be introduced at the beginning of the transaction sure. versus only once there's already an accepted offer? Yeah, well, I, I think first and foremost, obviously timing, right? right? You don't want to have accepted offer and first have to go and try to look for an attorney, engage an attorney. Right. You know, you just want to have somebody lined up so we're ready to rock. But more importantly is to start that initial conversation between the unit owner and myself to determine, you know, what red flags are the, right. out there against the building. Ultimately, at the end of the day, the buyer's gonna do due diligence. The buyer's attorney's gonna go in. They're gonna read minutes. They're gonna send out a questionnaire. So don't hide from things. Let's see what red flags are out right. there. There could be potential assessments. There could be an expiring land lease. There could be an old leak in the unit from the neighboring apartment upstairs. There's just so many factors that, you know, we just wanna sit down and really discuss what has been going on in the building. What is going on in your unit? So collectively, right. collaboratively, we can figure out how to you know address these things so that you know we're kind of one step ahead of the game for when the buyer learns out about them anyways yeah exactly and if there is an assessment or if there is a if there's a trouble thing in the apartment yep. that may affect pricing yeah you know? and so we, we we go ahead and on our side we run the comparables and we say hey, we think it should be priced x but we don't know about this assessment then right not all owners check their mail or go to every board meeting there, mm. there could be things going on for sure there could be things in the board minutes yep right that like they just didn't know about because they don't go to board meetings right. and all of a sudden this thing could be a huge red flag for the whole thing so has there been anything that you've experienced where by doing all this diligence up front you guys have saved 
you know, something that came out that then was able to, you were able to get ahead of it. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, you brought up one great example, right? You can have a unit owner that doesn't go to the meetings, doesn't read their mail notices, and, you know, the building doesn't have a lot of money in their reserve fund, mm. and there's a major upcoming, you know, capital assessment in connection with repairing the facade of a building mm. or a window replacement project. And ultimately, when you slice it out, each individual unit owner might be responsible for the sum of, you know, fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars right. over the course of years. Uh, so something like that, you can know ahead of time and factor that into price right. and discuss it with the buyers. More so, so it doesn't feel like it's sort of a bait and switch, right? right. Right. Um, you know, sometimes when you don't bring those things up, it leaves a bad taste in the That's buyer's right. mouth. You should have known about it. Right. How do you not know about That's it? Right. They're lying to me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it just helps really smooth and it all and out. And they're going to find out about it. Of course. Anyways, during the diligence process. Sure. So, thank you, Jason. This is great. Any final tips? So, if a seller is getting ready to go, they're getting ready to list, they're choosing their attorney, they're choosing yep. their broker, any final tips of what they should be looking to do? Um, you know, I, I think, you know, there's one major myth in residential real estate that's you know, surrounds the closing date. Everybody thinks that you pick a closing date and that's the closing mm -hmm. date. You know, I don't wanna, you know, we could talk about this for, for half an hour if we really <laughs> needed to, but New York closing dates, residential real estate, it's an honor about date, mm -hmm. which means you pick March 1st, that could mean end of March, it could mean middle of March. Right. So it's really just discussing and, and game planning for your next step. Right. Because a lot of people that are selling are selling apartments right. that you live in, so you got to really figure out how to get the timing down. It's more so, it's just a smooth and seamless transaction. Right. Happy customers. Right. You know. So plan well. Plan well. Plan well and have a plan B. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. Jason, thank you so much. Pleasure to see you. Likewise. So for anybody looking to sell, the real estate process can be complex and complicated. There are many twists and turns, but with a good team behind you, it doesn't have to be. You can really stay one step ahead.